In this final video segment, we are finally going to assemble all the parts that we've either constructed ourselves or were given to us in order to make a two configuration assembly. First configuration will be the front wheel assembly and the second, the rear wheel assembly. Using the master model technique, we've constructed several parts on our own that are custom or semi-custom. First would be the hub, which includes two configurations, the front and the rear the rim, which is just a single configuration, and the axle, which also has a front and a rear configuration. As a tutorial, we made a tire where we customized our own tread. And as another tutorial, we made a sprocket that has four configurations with between 15 and 18 teeth. When you build your wheel assembly, you can choose which of these four configurations you want to use. We also have a few parts which have been supplied to you. Supplied to you has been this neural valve stem nut and the actual valve stem and this lock ring which threads onto the rear hub and secures the sprocket so that that isn't loosened. These parts were not built using a master model. The last two parts applied to you are the spokes themselves. And you'll notice that half the spokes enter the flange from the outside face and half the spokes enter the flange from the inside face. So you will have two different spoke files, one for outside facing spokes and one for inside facing spokes. Looking at an inside facing spoke or inner spoke all by itself, this is the spoke that will go on the right hand side of the wheel. We have a second configuration that flips the spoke over to the left hand side and also angles it slightly differently so that it fits into the interleaved holes on the other side of the hub. So let's look straight at this. This is the left side spoke and that's the right side spoke. So you see this is angled down a little bit more. These have both been made off of the master file. So the length and position of these will automatically update if you changed your spoke hole number or the depth of your rim. So theoretically, these spokes should fit into place because they're using the same master file. We're now ready to build our front wheel assembly. Start by going to File, New, Assembly. And for the moment, let's just hit the red check mark here. Go up to File, Save. We're going to give this a new name. We're going to call this Tire-Wheel-ASM. We're going to go to our Configurations tab. We're going to rename the default configuration. We'll call that Front Wheel ASM. And we will add a new configuration. And we'll call that rear wheel ASM. Then I'm going to reactivate the front wheel assembly and then go back to my feature tree. The first three parts that I'm going to insert into this assembly were made from the master file and have their origin at the same place as the origin for the assembly. So we want to just drop those in place and make sure that those origins are aligned with this origin. So going up to Insert Components, I'm going to have to browse to my parts. And the part that I want to use to start with, I'm going to go with the hub since everything is built off of that, but it doesn't really matter which one goes first. Open. And what I want to make sure I do is not just plunk this down into the graphic window anywhere but instead come over to this green check mark and click on that. And what we should find is that the origin of our hub and the origin of our assembly are in the exact same place. You should see a little F next to the name of the hub. This indicates that the component is fixed and cannot be moved. Next component, Insert Components, we'll browse to the rim, and once again make sure that we just hit the green check mark. 
that'll put the center of the rim at the origin. You see it's concentric with the hub. Once again, insert components, browse to our axle. Now we have a rim floating around a hub and an axle. We'll notice here that when the axle was inserted, it was inserted with the rear axle configuration activated, but we are building the front wheel. What we're going to do then is right click on this, go up to this little item that looks like a document, highlights component properties, click on that. We want to go down to front axle and activate that. That will change that to the front axle configuration. If you see that the hub has the same problem where the rear hub is activated, right click on that. Again, go to this icon for component properties. Just make sure that front hub is activated. The spokes were also made using the master file, so they should drop into place and have their holes aligned both at the hub end and at the rim end. The first one I'm going to insert is going to be an inner spoke. Again, using this green check mark, and we see that this has perfectly aligned with the anchor end of the spoke going into the hub, and this end going just inside the rim. Normally, there would be threads on the end of the spoke, but we're not going to see those anyway when we finish this assembly. Now, we need to have a second inner spoke in this assembly that's going to be anchored into this side of the hub. So once again, we'll say insert, browse, and once again, we will use an inner spoke. That's going to put two spokes on top of each other. We want this spoke to be the configuration that's going to be on the left side of the wheel. We will right click on this particular spoke, go to our component properties, we're going to change the configuration to left side, and that flips it over to the other side. You see that this is now entering the hole, which is next to this one on the other side of the hub, and it goes into the adjacent hole. Now we're going to do the same with the outer spokes. Insert component, outer spoke. Again, hit that green check mark. That puts it in the proper location. And one more time, green check mark. And this one we want to right click on, go to component properties, and click on right side. I'm sorry, left side. And that flips it over to the left side of the hub. So now we've got a grouping of four spokes. This is why we always have to have a multiple of four spokes in our wheels. The next item we need to add are the spoke nuts or nipples, which thread onto the end of the spokes and anchor them at the end where they enter the rim. The nipples were not made using the master file, and they are going to be in different orientations depending on which spoke they are applied to. Therefore, we don't want to drop these in place in a fixed condition. If we look at the file for the nipple, we see added to the feature tree is a mating point and an alignment axis. This mating point is not a sketch point, but is a reference geometry item, which can be made here. We're going to use this convenient mating point, which can be found easily in the feature tree, and use that to mate the nipple with the hole in the rim. The alignment axis is a convenient little item that will allow us to align all the flats so that they are oriented the same way. This is just a nice little feature that you don't actually have to do for this assignment. Going back to our assembly, I'm going to insert components. I have the nipple already open in session, so I'll just click on that. And this time, I'm not going to click on the green check mark, but I'm just going to drag it out here into space. And we see that it does not have an F next to it. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to use this nipple for this spoke. I have a hole going through the nipple, so I can make this inside hole to this outside surface of the spoke. Using the concentric mate. And then I'm going to open up my feature tree here. And I'm going to 
look at the feature tree for the nipple and look for that mating point in the feature tree. So I'm going to mate this mating point in the nipple. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that. I'm going to mate that with the recessed surface of this hole. You see how that pulls that into place so that part of the nipple is sticking out of the rim and the rest of it is filling up the hole here and this end of the nipple is being is anchoring the spoke against this surface. Now if we want to make sure that this flat is oriented straight up and down, right now it can be in any orientation, we can use this alignment axis and we can make it parallel to the front plane of the assembly. See that that's turned a little bit. Now we have this flat straight up and down. In real life, of course, these flats will be in any orientation that's necessary to properly tension the spokes. But if you just want a nice looking assembly that looks consistent, you can do that. Now we need to have three more nipples for the three other spokes. Fastest way to get them into the assembly is just click on the one that's already there. Control C, Control D, copy and paste. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. It drops these in place in an unfixed position. The reason I didn't do this before when making the other spokes is I didn't want the new spokes to be dropped in place in an unfixed position. But here we need that anyway because the nipples need to be in different orientations. They're all stacked on top of each other right now, so I can move each one next to the spoke it's going to be applied to, and then apply all the necessary mates to get these into the proper position. I won't show all those, I'll just show the final result of having all the nipples in the right position. Here's what the four spokes and the four nipples look like when they're properly mated. If I take a cross section through the front plane, that little alignment point or mating point is sitting right here on the nipple and that is mated to this step surface here. You notice that the nipple actually digs into the surface a little bit because of this angle. We aren't going to worry about that. Now it's time to pattern all the spokes and nipples. But before we do that, we need an axis to pattern around. We need an axis going right through our axle, which is the intersection of the top plane and the right plane. So that's what we're going to do. We go over to Reference Geometry, Axis top plane and right plane of the assembly. Now we have an axis that's been put into our feature tree and we're ready to make the rest of the wheel. Going to circular component pattern, the components we need to pattern are going to be all four spokes and the four nipples. These can be picked off the graphics window or off the feature tree. We want this to go around the full 360 degrees. So we're going to say equal spacing. And in this case, I've got 36 spokes total that I want, but I'm doing groupings of four. So I only need to make a pattern of nine because nine times four is the 36. And if we've done this correctly, we should see that all of the nipples and the spokes align properly with the holes in the rim. Once that's been done, added right after the mates folder is another folder that says local circular pattern one. Click on the plus sign and we see all of the components that have been put into that pattern. You see we've got quite a few going here. 
Now I only have three more parts to insert to complete my front wheel assembly. First part is going to be the valve stem, which is normally part of the inner tube, but since we won't see the inner tube itself, we're just going to put in the stem. The stem includes a convenient center alignment axis and also another mating point. It's a little bit above the end of the stem. We're going to be mating this point with the inner ring of the rim, and then this portion here will stick down into the rim a little bit. The knurled valve stem nut also has an axis going through it, or if we want to, we can use the cylindrical outer surface for mating purposes. Either will work. These parts have not been made using the master model, so we have to just drop them into the assembly and maneuver them into place. Insert component. I happen to have these open in session, so I'll grab the valve stem and just drag this into this area here. And I might as well get the nut at the same time, drag that into this area as well. Finish that, let's zoom in on here. Here's the hole in the rim. You'll notice that it's between two groupings of spokes. These spokes are approximately parallel to each other. And opening up the feature tree for the valve stem, so I can see the valve axis and the mating point. Now sometimes I find it's a little bit easier to just hold my control key down, select the two items to be mated, and then click on mate. This way I can easily pick things from this feature tree rather than having to go to the one that pops up in the graphics window. So holding down my control key, I'm going to click on the valve axis and this cylindrical surface of the hole. Go to mate. It's going to default to coincident. Make sure you set it to concentric. I'll hit the green check mark a second time. Then I'm going down to my mating point, again holding my control key, and I'm going to click on this inner surface of the rim, mate, defaults to coincident. And you see what it's done is because the mating point was not at the very end of the stem, it's pulled the stem down into the hole so that the end of the stem is actually several millimeters below this surface. The next step is to mate the nut. Let's open up the feature tree on that as well, where we can see the axis for the nut. Again, I'm holding down my control key. I'm going to click on this axis, scroll up a little bit, click on the valve axis, hit mate, That's going to align the two axes. Click my check mark. Now instead of clicking on the green check mark a second time, which will close the mate window, I'm going to leave it open because I don't need to do any more selecting from the feature tree. I'm going to click on this bottom surface of the nut and on this inner surface of the rim. And that's going to give me a tangent mate. The reason it's tangent is that this is not a flat surface. If you find this flipping off to the other side here, try flipping your mate alignment. If we zoom in on that, you'll see that there's a slight gap between the bottom of the nut and the curve of the rim. We have just one last part to put into place to complete the front wheel assembly, and that's obviously the tire. So insert components, I'm going to have to browse to that. Here's my tire, open. And this one, we do want to hit the green check mark because the center of that is at the center of the wheel. And that completes my front wheel assembly. Right now I have my tread suppressed just to make this rebuild faster. So now that we've done most of the hard work, it's time to do the few changes required to turn this into a rear wheel assembly. Going back to our configurations tab, we double click on rear wheel assembly and we see our spokes have disappeared. Going to our feature tree, we see that the axis and the pattern were suppressed. Just simply unsuppress those to 
bring those items back. And one of the most obvious things we need to do now is change this hub to the rear configuration. Right clicking on the hub, go to our components properties and click on rear hub. You see that changes to the hub that has the threads on the back for the sprocket and lock ring. Also the axle we see is sort of sucked into the hub here. We need to turn that into the rear configuration. Let's just toggle the front wheel for a moment to make sure that that toggles properly. Good. And what we need to do is add to this thread here a sprocket and this thread here a lock ring. This type of hub also allows a second sprocket and lock ring to be added if you want. This is for people that want to flip the wheel around and have a different sprocket on each side. But we're just going to put it onto this side. Going back to my feature tree, I will now say insert components. I'm going to browse to my sprocket. And I'm going to just drag this into a random place in the window. I don't want to fix it. And I'm going to again insert and browse to the lock ring. And once again, drop that into a random location. The sprocket is going to thread onto this larger diameter set of threads and seat up against this face here. The center of it is obviously going to be in line with the center axle. The lock ring will thread onto the smaller set of threads and this face will lock against this face of the sprocket. So starting with the sprocket, we have an axis that's convenient for mating. So I'm going to hold down my control key, click on axis, scroll up to the top here, click on axis one, which is part of my assembly, mate, and that drags that into place. While I've got the mate window open, I'm going to click on this face of the sprocket and this face of the hub. That should be a coincident mate. And that pulls that right into place. And I'll finish the mate. Now right now I can spin this in place. Of course, this would really be locked in place with respect to the wheel. So if I want to orient this with the wheel properly, I can do one last mate. I'm going to just align the top plane of my sprocket with the top plane of the assembly, holding my control key, top plane of the sprocket, top plane of the assembly, and then hit mate again, and that'll just lock this into place. Now I need to add the lock ring. This should have a center axis as well. Clicking open the feature tree for the lock ring. Click on the axis for that, the axis for the assembly, mate, Make sure that's set to coincident. While the mate window is open, we'll click on this surface of the sprocket and this back surface of the lock ring. That locks that into place. And once again, this can still spin around. Once this is tightened, it will be locked into place. So I can Orient this as well by just orienting the top plane of the lock ring with the top plane of the assembly. So holding my control key, top plane of the lock ring, top plane of the assembly, mate. You see how that's rotated that around. So if we look at this straight on, you see these little notches on the lock ring are horizontal. Let's just test this now. We switch to our other configuration of the front wheel assembly. Here's the rear wheel, of course. Click to front wheel, and we see that it changes all the configurations, but it's leaving the lock ring and the sprocket in place. So just go back to our feature tree and suppress the lock ring and the sprocket. Let's go back one more time. Click on the rear assembly, front assembly, and that's looking good. 
If you look at the mates folder, click that open with a plus, we see in the front configuration that several of the mates were actually suppressed. These are the mates that were related to the sprocket and the lock ring, which are suppressed in this configuration. So it's appropriate that those mates are suppressed. Let's go to the other configuration. And because these nipples were added in the front configuration and not in the rear, the mates that were used to position these might be suppressed. So if we go to the mates folder one more time and open that up while we have the rear configuration activated, we see a whole pile of mates that were related to the spoke nipples and the rim are all suppressed. And the ones that are currently unsuppressed are only the ones that were added while the rear configuration was activated. Those are the ones related to the lock ring and the sprocket. You want to make sure that these are unsuppressed also in this configuration. So all I have to do is hold down my shift key, click on the first mate in the list, go down to the last one which is suppressed, highlighting all of them, click on unsuppressed, that will make sure that these are all in an unsuppressed state. And we see now that all the nipples which had a minus next to them now show no symbol next to them, meaning that those are fully defined. The only components that have a little minus symbol next to them, meaning that they are not in a fully defined position, are the valve stem and the valve stem nut, because we left one mate off of each of those, meaning that they can spin in place. And we're okay with that. The nipples are fully defined because we used that alignment axis to make sure that these faces facing outward are perfectly straight up and down. You don't need to do that for this assignment. And if you don't, you'll see a minus sign next to those as well. And you'll be able to spin these in place, but not move them otherwise. One last check. Let's just go to our configurations tab. Here's our rear wheel assembly. Here we see nothing is suppressed. We go to our front wheel assembly, and the only thing that should be suppressed are these last two items in the feature tree and these last mates that were related to those two particular items which are not showing in this assembly. That completes this assignment.